Would you rather have an exquisite... These two cards. The exquisite triple logo man. LeBron, Jordan, Kobe. One of one. Triple logo man. Unautographed. And the Warriors triple logo man. Or the LeBron James triple logo man. So you could have those two. Or you could have the, the just the LeBron James triple logo man. Seems like a no-brainer, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, you could actually... Those, those auctions went for lower... On Golden. Those two. the Triple Logo Man. So the Warriors Triple Logo Man sold for around 350000 I don't have the exact number. I have like 360. I have to look it up. So Draymond, Clay. Hopefully Steph. went to a Warrior Collector. Hopefully. And then there was an exquisite Triple Logo Man. Looks amazing. Of LeBron, Kobe, and Jordan. That sold yeah. for one point six. So you could literally have those two cards over the LeBron James Triple Logo Man out of Flawless. So my question, and that's kind of what's kicking off this whole thing, is was there was there just so much hype on this card that it literally? I mean, you thought you said ten million, he said five million. Something like five, yeah. I think I said three. I was over it, and uh, this card sells for two point four. And then cards that were better are selling for less. And what's funny is two point four is again put yourself back in 2018, 2019. Well, if you heard a card sold for two point four million, you'd be like, you're out of your mind. Without an autograph, and now it's too. a disappointment. Yeah. But, like, you could have literally had those two iconic cards. You could have had the Triple Logo Man Warriors, which is, I don't know, maybe I'm biased, but that's the dynasty right there. That's four championships on one card. I mean, yeah, okay. For us Warrior fans, that card is – you can't put a price point on that card. That's just – we would all love to have that card. That's a dream card. Um, Thinking about it now, obviously, the obvious choice is the the Triple Warriors and the exquisite LeBron, Michael Jordan, and Kobe. But I'm wondering now – how many times did they do that, LeBron, Kobe, and Michael, in the in the whole run of Exquisite? <sighs> it's got to be a few times, right? Maybe a few, but I don't think too many. Maybe maybe less than five. So I, I guess you can make the argument, if you're on the other side, that there's only one triple logo LeBron right now. I I with him on now. three For him on three different teams, uh, the three teams that he won championships and, and, with, too. And I think, too, that the value of it also <clears> comes <throat> from, like, three different players. It, you would think, like, Okay, three different legends. Like, you would think that's more, but I think also the fact that it's one guy where people are LeBron collectors, I think that also, that mar- I think that kind of spikes his market. Yeah, helps Whereas, that he like, won a championship it. with yeah. all three, too. Well, exactly. does it de- okay, so, like, and I know he's been on the Cavs, the Heat, and the Lakers, so that encompasses his whole career. What if he goes to the Suns? Does that card devalue now? <laughs> you know what I'm quad, the first quad logo <laughs> yeah. man coming soon. Right. That's what I'm thinking. Because like, if he doesn't remain on any of those three teams, which is a good possibility, he leaves the team. How would you yeah. even? Could and, you and even that, that would have to be a book at that yeah. point. Yeah, exactly. It would have to be a book. Yeah. Well, we remember from the, what was it, maybe the second or third year, maybe the first year of Immaculate where it had the six logo mans. Yeah. It was three Wild. on each side. I believe it was all Thunder on one. So there was like Durant, Westbrook, somebody else. And then I think there was And that was from – what product was that from? That was from uh, – Immaculate. Oh, was it Immaculate? Yeah. That was Immaculate. Wow. Okay. Then they're like, why did we waste six Logo Mans on one card? <laughs> yeah. So they don't do that anymore. But, um, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's 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 what I'm just thinking. Like, you if you own this card for $2.4 million, you hope he never leaves the Lakers, right? You hope that he stays uh, in the Lakers. I don't know if I hope. I just uh, – I just hope they don't make another one. Let's, how about that? I hope just they don't make another triple or even a quad. Oh, I don't know. Do you think we live our whole lives with LeBron James uh, exclusive to Upper Deck? Yeah. Do we think that? What's the over-under on that happening? Uh, if he never signs an actual licensed deal with a manufacturer. Got to be low if Anybody can pull it off. I'm, I, I feel like Fanatics could pull right. it off eventually. Yeah. Um, I would obviously us collect, as collectors, we would all love to see that. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. They I, maybe he, his relationship with Upper Deck is too good. I don't know. Well, because here's the thing to keep in mind. I think a lot of collectors don't realize this. The only reason Panini has pictures of LeBron on cards is because he is in the NBA. Yeah. So he's part of the Players Association. So his photos can be used. That's why you don't have autographs. He's an exclusive autograph signer for Upper Deck. But once he retires. There will be no cards of LeBron anymore. No current cards being made. I was thinking about that. Couldn't he technically, because a lot of retired players do this, couldn't he technically still just sign a deal with the NF, uh, NBA PA where they can still use his likeness? Yes, but then at that point, why wouldn't you just try to get him for his autographs too? Yeah. You know what I mean? Which so is that, what they're going to do. That's no what I'm thinking. Is like, 
once he retires, he's probably going to be like, he's going to have more time. He's, you know, he's going to be thinking about what he's going to do for his legacy. And uh, he may be like, well, why am I? I mean, Maverick Carter owns part of Mitchell and S with Fanatics, which is his right hand man, right? So it's just, I mean, I know he's had this long standing um, relationship with Upper Deck, and Michael's there, and that's probably how it all happened. But at some point, it's like, are you going to. You're, are you tired of signing, like, you know, when you're on high school photos? And yeah. It, it, the, Le, the LeBron who signed that deal with Upper Deck is not the LeBron right. of today. The LeBron, the businessman, the guy working with Maverick Carter on all of these brands he's got, the the the, the, the shop, and all these. His, his brand has completely changed. So, it's, uh, yeah, I, I can't imagine... This is he's going to do something after he retires where he figures it out. Hell, I wouldn't even be surprised if he's just like all of my likenesses is going to be sold through my brand. Period. You have to buy it through my website. (coughs) I'm not making a deal with Fanatics. I'm not making a deal with Upper Deck. It's me. Right. uh, Through what is it? Undisputed, I think, is uh, the the brand. Yeah, he's an entrepreneur. Yeah. I mean, and it could be a situation where like you look at Tom Brady and he's like, He's in 2019 Flawless, but he's not in 18 Flawless, and then he's not in 17, and he's not in 22 Flawless either. So it's like I think Panini will pay his going rate every other year when they need him and like, put like 10 or 20 autos in there, right? So it could be a scenario with him where, like, you know, Fanatics calls whoever his agent is and gets, you know, 10 or 20 in the X amount of products or whatever they're doing, right? Yeah. Whether it be they buy Panini and they, they make National Treasures or they're using Topps Chrome or whatever. I mean, we already talked about it on an older episode, but, you know, once uh, Fanatics gets the license for basketball, you know 0304 Chrome throwback is going to be in play. Oh, yeah. And then we'll you might that. even have the possibility of Bronny Jr. at that point, too. Maybe Bronny Jr. in an 0304 Chrome design with his pops. I mean, it's going to be wild. wild that's times. the dream. That's, that's totally the dream. Because I actually had a friend of mine who had, I don't know if you guys remember this set. It was called All Time Greats. And it was like by Upper Deck. And it was like, I think it came out like 12 or 13. And there were themed boxes. So you'd open it up and it'd be like, oh, Larry Bird. So you got Larry Bird Auto and like five Larry Bird cards. And then there'd be like LeBron James, of course. And then there'd be Michael Jordan. And then, you know, all their exclusive athletes. But they didn't have the NBA license, so it was all collegiate stuff. I remember the premise. So yeah. he actually has a number to twenty-three dual LeBron signed and dual Jordan on it as well. So Jordan LeBron dual signed number to twenty-three. He graded it, got a nine-five, but it's LeBron on the uh, you know the, the the Irish or whatever the high school, and then of course Jordan North Carolina. So he's been he had it on eBay for a while, and somebody offered him like I think fourteen grand right for it. And he's like, would you sell it? And I'm like, at first I was like, I don't know. It's hard to get LeBron and Jordan together on card, right? But then I'm thinking about it. What if eventually they do get the license and then they have them sign license stuff? All that collegiate stuff is going right. to be like so dumpster I'm like, fire. You know, Not dumpster fire, but it's going to go down. It's, it's going to go LeBron, down. Yeah. I mean, it's LeBron and Jordan. You're probably pretty safe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. It's still LeBron. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those are two of the, two of the top two. I arguably. said dumpster fire. Like, it's going to go down to like $500. Yeah. <laughs> That would be the day. Bargain right? bin, MJ and LeBron. <laughs> yep, right, right. I mean, get, get them while you can. I mean, I, the conversation when I came back into the hobby in, in 2011, 2012, the conversation was, um, I remember it being like, dude, like the market is getting oversaturated with LeBron and Jordan autos yeah. back then. Even, with the, even when it was just college stuff, they're like, this is going to dilute the market of theirs. And then a couple years later, they just – Stop signing or yeah, upper no deck. Stop making products. Back to the overhyped cards. I noticed you put a Wander uh, Wander Franco card on here. I did, and uh, <laughs> I want to know your reasoning. Uh, I think that just in general, uh, this has kind of always been my stance with baseball. Is I get that baseball cards uh, that obviously the first Bowmans are the ones everybody wants, but I think a lot of times it's just like. You see so many first moments of guys who 90, 80 to 90% of the time amount to very little yeah. in the major leagues, and we're spending so much on them. Meanwhile, there's Topps Chrome rookie autos of some of these guys who are all-star guys, MVP candidates who you could buy three of them for the price of a first Bowman auto of a catcher who the moment they arrive in the major leagues are going to have two or th- uh, like a week of really high sales and then no one will care. Like Adley Rushman's having a great year. I would, I haven't looked at the numbers and maybe somebody's going to say you're wrong. His stuff has gone up, but I would bet a lot that his numbers 
his Bowman, first Bowmans have gone down since he's made the majors, even though the Baltimore Orioles are like half a game out of a playoff spot and they have been a completely different team since he got called up. So just in general, that's always one where I'm like, the moment they get called up, just sell it. I, yes, it could be Mike Trout, but like, there's to me, those are always overhyped where it's just get out while you can if you've got something good for a prospect for baseball because – the likelihood is within two weeks, three weeks, the value of it is going to plummet. Yeah, I mean, look at guys that got in on Tatis at heavy prices. And, I mean, I'm sure he'll be fine and he'll come back. Right. Like, if you look at the prices right now, you're like, ooh, you know, that you're, actually, you're taking a bath. For a while, I was actually thinking, you know, I was big on, like, Tatis is getting to the level where he is the Zion of, 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 bas- of baseball because he's always hurt and he can't. Uh, but his prices maintain. But now it's actually funny, like, with the Padres moves. He might actually not be a bad investment all of a sudden. Well, and that's the other thing about these prospects is how often do they remain on their same team? Yeah. I mean, none of the – I mean, now you got Soto, which we all love, and now he's on a different team. Well, we just – I mean, we just talked about it. There's – I mean, speaking of the Padres, yeah, it's like suddenly there's guys who – especially because there's a lot of high-end pro- prospects on the Padres through the year, C.J. Abrams and Robert Hassel and these guys. I was actually collecting some Robert Hassel, uh, and now he's on the Washington Nationals. And, you know, not that it's – we you know, guys can maintain their value on different teams. We saw it with Tatis. Uh, but yeah, it's it's especially with how they they can bounce around, and I think teams recently in recent years, especially with what's going on in the NOS, where it just is kind of an arms race at the moment. Like these prospects, it's more volatile than ever. Like it's it's hard to lock down a guy uh, and hope. Okay, this is going to be the team that this guy plays for this entire career. You just kind of have to, in a lot of way, in a lot of times, you just kind of have to assume that if they're on, especially if they're on a good team, that they're probably going to get dealt at some point if right. they got drafted by a competitive team. And, you know, and I never even thought about it from, like, a new a newbie perspective. Like, say you're watching Tatis, like, last year or whatever year he's doing those jumping catches and he's hitting home runs and he's flashy. And you're like, I'm going to look for his best card. And then you're like, White Sox? Like, you know, maybe you're a kid. You're like, that's probably not the right card. You know what I mean? Because you're just all you know is that he was on the Padres, right? <laughs> so yeah. yeah, you know some of these Bowman. That's why, yeah, you're you're right. It's like surprising that sometimes the um, the the tops Chrome should outsell because that's usually the team that they're going to be on for at least a while, right? Yeah. You know, initially. and I always see it like if you've got that tops Chrome rookie, to me, it's like you made it. Like, yeah, maybe you don't pan out, but like you made it. You got to the big leagues. Um, so yeah, and again, uh, you want the first card. I get it, but I just again, I, I reiterate it all the time. Just be the safest bet is just get those cards sold the moment they hit the big leagues because it's just it, it's it is like clockwork. The moment you get up there, you're gonna have a nice bounce, and then it's just gonna tumble downward unless you're Mike Trout, unless you're Fernando Tatis, unless you are the one percent of the one percent. And you could kind of say that about most sports, maybe with the exception of quarterbacks in football. But you know, you look at basketball. You, if you sold Lamelo last year, yeah. you're doing better than you are this year. If you sold, I mean, obviously Zion. I mean, even John Morant, who actually has been progressively getting better, never topped his rookie year prices. It's like the hobby the hobby gets around a guy for a year, and then, oh, wait, there's the next guy. Okay, now we're going to go to the next guy. Oh, now we're going to go to the next guy. So it's like, you know, Luka might be the, the one guy that people still rally around because I think so many people got in during the Luka year and the hype and all the new people coming back in, these sneaker collectors and stuff, all came in when it was Luka hype. And they all have the cards, but it's like the last five years of basketball. I mean, look at Donovan Mitchell and Jason Tatum. I mean, those prices don't, you've got Mobley's and Jalen Green's going for more than those guys. So, um, you know, from a flipping perspective, it's almost best if you are in it to do that. You're not in it to collect to almost flip before their rookie year runs out. So, yep. um, now you got some <clears> cards <throat> here, some big boy cards out of my uh, price range, but <laughs> man. Got the uh, the Brady uh, Champ ticket, the Honus Wagner two, and of course the the the, the Mickey Mantle uh, nine five um, from the the Rosen find, um, which is an incredible story. Have you heard the story about that? Where the guy basically bought like where this Mickey Mantle came from? I guess a guy found an attic full of sealed boxes of oh, fifty two. Wow. And bought it, opened them all up, and this was the best one. So I guess he sold the whole thing. I think he sold this mantle for like forty thousand, and he always wanted it back. I believe he bought it back for like a hundred thousand, 
later okay. on from the guy because he's like he remembered graded. how great it looked. No, right. well, I don't think it was graded yet. Okay. He just remembered seeing it. I could be not doing justice to the story, but I think it's out there. It, the guy's name is Mr. Mint, very famous in the 80s and 90s, and he was the one that discovered this collection and then kind of pieced it out and then was like, I want that. That mantle I saw was perfect. I want that back and got it back, and that's where it is now, 9.5. Nine, 6.2 million is what's currently sitting at with one week to go, 9.5. I don't like the black tuxedo. I wish it was PSA. Sorry, SGC. Uh, I like um, it. You like it? I, I, per, I, I'm coming around to the SGC slab a lot. Now, I don't, however, still like I, – I still don't like when it has an autograph and they have that separate tag for the autograph. I don't like that. When, it was, when, I, when it's the single tag – at the, up at the top, yeah, I, I like that. But when, you know, you know, sometimes I'll add the extra auto yeah, grade on the yeah. side. I don't like that. Yeah. But just in general, I think it, I think vintage looks good in it. Um, yeah, I'm I, obviously I still do prefer PSA uh, slab, but SGC is definitely growing on me. I think the SGC slab for the tobacco card, as seen here on the Honus, it looks good because the card's smaller, right? So it has to kind of mm-hmm. um, take up the rest of the space. Um, I, I bet you have HGA graded that they somehow find a way to make a mini slab. Right? Please no. <laughs> just a tobacco. Please God slab. no. Could you imagine <laughs> just a mini? Somebody slab? getting and it's all like oh, it is like hella a, tiny yeah, team yeah. colors and yeah. <laughs> you use a magnifying glass to read it. They'd probably have a cigarette on the like in the background of the slab somehow. Yeah, and it'd be like HGA, and then it's like tobacco. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's a two, man. Seven point two million. Seven point two. Yeah, guess what? The, the 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 and that's the record now, right? That is that's the record, right? That is the new record. And it, but but we're saying already, it's projected the mantle's going to go up. They've been saying ten million, but six point two with a week left. I that's a lot of ground to make up. And again, it's the biggest bet. The biggest bids come in at the end, but. That is a lot of ground to make up in a week to, to reach that ten million mark, but it's sh- again it what, should not be what, disappointment. What was the previous it. Wagner that sold the fr- that had the record? What, what grade was it? It was like probably the one? Gretzky Wagner. I don't even know if that one was graded. You might want to look that one up. Yeah, um, it's owned by the Diamondbacks owner. I believe there was it was like there was like a four or five million one pretty recently. I feel like, um, but there's very few one. copies in existence. Yeah. That's why because. Um, Honus did not – he signed up for the cards, but he didn't know they were going to be in tobacco products, and he didn't want to be associated with tobacco products. So that he so, made them pull a so bunch of them? pulled a bunch of them before they even made okay, them. That ma- so that, okay, that makes yeah, – okay, I remember hearing that story, obviously. I've heard that story a thousand times in the hobby, but, um, yeah, I mean, the question is, is are these car- three cards worth the hype, right? Is that, is that what we're asking? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to say yes, because all I've been told since I've been, been in this hobby is that – these are the three like these are some of the these are three of the most some of the most iconic sports cards or and or investments that you can make in sports cards like the Honus, the Brady contenders and the Mano 52. Like these are like if you're if you're going like, you know, the top of the top, like at least top five, these three are in it. It's got to be. Well, I mean, I'm looking at this, right? And I'm going like. The Brady looks like a great deal, right? <laughs> right, um, seven hundred. It's probably I mean, good. that might yeah. reach a million. But yeah, you it is a great deal because you wait a hundred years from now. How much is that Brady going to be I'm worth? Saying right, because like Mantle, obviously a great champion, but doesn't have a lot of records, right? I mean, yeah. he has records, but you know, it, 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 he was he was baseball cards, and I get why he Honus Wagner, obviously a Hall of Famer too. Yeah, but Brady's the goat. He's a goat. And uh, will anybody ever have? Seven Super Bowls. And here, here, hear me out. Six or whatever. Hear me out on this too. Seven. It's, it's, he has six. No, I think he has seven, doesn't he? I know. Oh he has God. six. See, we don't even know. Jo- so no, Joe I believe Montana it's seven. I believe it's seven. Right? I believe it's seven. No, Joe Montana has four. Oh, damn. He, so did. he been passed him up then. Oh. 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 Long time ago. Hold on. Uh, okay. okay. It, it might be six. I think he had five with the Patriots and then one with the Bucks, right? We have to look. He wins so many, That's we sad. forget how many. There people are, are so right many now. people screaming at their. I just know he hey, has once he passed, but... once he passed Montana, is like we don't, we're not keeping track anymore, because um, nobody else has more championships yeah, than over. him. Another thing to think about is that okay, the reason why these two baseball cards are so iconic as well, not just because the players that are on them, but because the scarcity of both of those. Sure. Yeah. Right. And then you can make the same argument for that contenders Brady, because yep. how many other rookie autos does he have? And then how many contender rookie autos, just the base versions, does he have? It's, well, not, this, it's not many. This is the, the number to 100 version, so That's you know base. you're safe there. Yeah. Right? There's only 100 copies, maybe. And then, uh, yeah, the base version, maybe 300, 400. So, there's Dude, maybe only so the scarcity systems. applies, funny enough, to the Brady card as well. Right. So 100 years from now, these are going to be impossible to find. 
Yeah, it almost is like let's sell everything and just buy Brady cards, right? Because I mean, <laughs> and it's like if you want to leave something to your kids, and like if you want to just pull all your other investments, like property and whatever. I'm not, not financial advice, obviously, but I, if I were if I had this type of money, I I, I would at least think about getting that Brady. Yeah, because I mean. Yeah, I mean, it's it, – and plus, it's also, like, the first kind of autographed – like, I mean, I want to say contenders the, – the Peyton Manning was first, obviously, in 98, the autographed Peyton Manning. I want to say they started – and I, I could be wrong. I'm not a really historian when it comes to early – late 90s stuff. But I want to say 96 might have been the first autograph or around around that time. But this is by far the first biggest autograph that ever happened. Yeah. And, um, and, and he was, like, a sixth, sixth rounder. So it's like nobody even really – there was probably people that sold this card for dollars back then. Yeah. You know so. what blows my mind about that Mano 2 is that obviously we don't know how, what it's going to go for, but it's going to be between 7 to 10 most likely. And then you think about the, what is it, what the baseball owner that has the, that owns the PSA 10. Yeah. Like, what What do you think that card is worth, dude? Absolutely ridiculous amounts. <laughs> and, and I think <laughs> worth more than the Diamondbacks. He probably. <laughs> Honestly, I would say the Diamondbacks' value, pro- part of it is probably that collection of baseball cards that he's got. Just but- that PSA 10 Mano, dude, because, th- like, this is hard to get already in, its- within itself. 9.5 from SGC for a vintage, like, all-white. You know what I mean? White borders and corner, like perfect corners, corners, pretty yeah. much. Uh, a PSA ten. I don't even want to know. It's yeah, be and he has thing. the he has the Willie Mays Bowman in a ten too. <clears throat> yeah, so, yep. I mean he's literally got, you know, the best collection of anybody. Um, and yeah. I th- I think in general, like to kind of get put a bow on this, like. Like, uh, look, I, I think like 95, 90, 95 percent of the audience is like, I'm not going to be able to buy a Wagner or a, a, or, or a Mantle or a Brady. But I think the point is, like, compare this to the cards we've been talking about on the show, the WWE and the, the prospects and all this, like, get LeBron that, get in that, right, all these things that are like hot right now. It just I feel like every time we're in on that new hype. That it's like you have to be reminded of like it's about the long game and yes you're not getting these but it's the vintage stuff to great me point. that it, that's it a hold, great point it holds the value if yeah. you're like if you are out for the quick chase it's you can do it there's a hustle to it and that's fine and have yep. fun doing it but like I think in the long run at the end of the day like in 20 30 years it's this stuff is this stuff I, I feel like I, I'm a broken <laughs> record but like. This is the stuff that twenty years ago was worth something. It's the stuff that twenty years from now is going to be worth yep. something. And, and, just, and, yeah, you know? like like you said, not to sound like a broken record, but like I said, the same thing. The, ever since I've been back in the hobby, the like these iconic cards are the same ones that people are always at the end of the day. And it's funny, like yeah, like you said, we're we're getting hyped about the LeBron, like Golden, and all these other auctions that are like b- hyping up these more current cards and the Wanders and all that stuff. But it's like, and then the. The freaking vintage comes in and just again slaps everybody in the face like right. yo this is what you actually should well, be and buying. that's what i should i mean you know i want to try to do and i've done it a little bit is like you get these trevor lawrence's and stuff and work your way up to maybe saving to buy the brady that's like the pinnacle yeah. of it all is like being able to get those cards maybe flip them and then save it and then like it's like kind of like you know getting a gold bar You're like hey, i got a little bit and then i got enough to get a gold bar now you know like let's buy the gold bar but you know it's in terms of football, and we're about to get into the 2021 QBs, so uh, so we're going to kind of flip the script on that. But, like, what other – what's the second – like, we can arguably say that this Brady is probably the best football card of all time. I mean, I don't know. Vintage collectors might say no. But, like, what's second? What's third? What, what other card is – what's next? Like, I feel like it's like this is above and beyond anything even close. Like, there's not even a close second. I think it would have to be something vintage – um, I Jim know, Brown. I was going to say there's a lot of folks who like the Jim Browns. Um, you could go with Walter Payton. Some of those super rare vintage football cards, right? right? But even the Joe Montana doesn't sell for as much. No, right? no, that's that, I, don't, I don't think that was. Yeah, I don't think that was rare enough. Um, when people would probably point to some of the biggest football cards, add to your as an investment thing, like they always point out to those. But those guys are running backs, right? There's not. What are the quarterbacks? Quarterback yeah. You know what, Bart Starr? I mean, I yeah. mean, even Terry Terry Bradshaw. It's I mean, got to be. I mean, it's got to be like the real vin- the real vintage stuff. You got to go way back. Like, uh, you know, uh, I can't even think right off the top of my Who's head. Who's second in the last twenty two years? Manning. I, I was gonna say Manning, but like, there isn't an. I I can't think of like 
What what's the first Manning card do you think? Contenders. Though? Contenders. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. Too. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. But and then same thing with, with Rogers, maybe. Breeze. Rogers might be. Rogers might be the other guy in the modern. But again, he's for what he's accomplished. His value is not quite no. where it probably one be. Super Bowl. Yeah, but uh, what I mean, a whole shelf full of MVPs and uh, statistically, you could make an argument the best quarterback that we've ever seen in some seasons. So Rogers contenders second to the Brady contenders. I mean, that's, I feel like that's like a whole, like, like Brady or lapped him like 10 times. I I feel like that scene in Moneyball. Brady lapped everybody 10 times. I I feel like that scene in Moneyball where it's like, here's Tom Brady and a whole pile of S (laughs) and then here's the rest. 